On June 10, 1991, the people of Clark Air Base, Philippines, and nearby communities faced a life-threatening issue. On that day, nature changed part of Luzon Island forever. Mount Pinatubo, a 5,500-foot dormant volcano just eight miles southwest of Clark, had slept for more than 600 years. While that ominous peak had served to reveal beautiful sunsets for the region, it also posed a major threat. This is that story. by the thousands that memorable Monday morning. It was a mass exodus that began with an initial 55 miles of what was to be a rather long and arduous journey. An estimate of at least 20,000 men, women, children, pets, and a variety of vehicles descended upon the beautiful Subic Bay Naval Base, Philippines. This 9.30 a.m. arrival had represented an initial wave of evacuees. Those who took part in the 6 a.m. caravan from their estranged home of Pampanga province on or near Clark Air Base would see many others to follow. The relative short distance to Subic was lengthened due to road conditions as well as the mountainous terrain. The evacuation was undertaken because of perceived threats of danger that were posed by recent signs of the potential eruption of a 600-year dormant volcano. The local people had referred to the restless peak as Mount Pinatubo. Signs of an imminent eruption were noticeable as early as April 2nd of 1991. Gaseous odors were present in the air and billows of steam could be seen emitting from the volcano just eight miles from Clark. American and Filipino authorities initiated plans of evacuation for the local community. The media informed residents of the impending threat, and the U.S. military community was provided guidance through Armed Forces radio and television service facilities. During the weeks following the initial signs of the potential threat, U.S. and Filipino volcanologists studied the mountain with the aid of specialized instruments installed to provide crucial data. Area residents were continually informed of the potential for a temporary evacuation of Clark. To that end, the average Clarkite and local resident was faced with the heart-rending decision of what personal possessions to take or leave behind in view of an impending evacuation. On-base residents questioned security of their unattended households during normal conditions, let alone considering the consequences of such an emergency as evacuation. The other factor which concerned many residents was the off-base housing security question. Off-base subdivisions were vast, numerous, and for the most part, unprotected. The final decision to evacuate left many with hard choices of what few personal property items would be taken to sustain themselves and family for the anticipated two- or three-day bug-out that was regularly broadcast from local information sources. Many pondered the decision on whether to carry beloved pets or just leave them behind with food and water. The outcome of those various choices will remain with us for years to come. While many of the families were given safe haven accommodations at Subic, others, as in this case, were moved into existing facilities at Old San Miguel Naval Communications Station. Then, approximately 48 hours after our evacuation, almost as sudden as the move itself, we encountered the first full eruption of Mount Pinatubo. Through the use of time-lapse videography and the clarification brought through Super VHS format, we were able to capture these striking scenes of billowing plumes being projected into the skies over the Clark area. These shots, taken on June 12th at about 9.45 a.m., 
Picture ash-laden clouds that range in heights towards 60,000 feet, climbing at a rate of more than 1,000 miles per hour. Along with the arrival of Typhoon Yunya and seven inches of monsoon showers that day, the evacuees faced frequent earth tremors and the effects of total darkness on June 15th. This event was known as Black Saturday. It was a condition in which suspension of debris in the local atmosphere had caused all sunlight to be blocked, turning day into pitch black night. While the accumulation of ash rose to dusty, unhealthy levels, critical water and power shortages were evident. The following Monday, June 17th, proved a refreshing change for the over 3,500 fellow evacuees, 250 cage pets, and all belongings. This weary group of travelers were processed at Subic Naval Base for an adventurous journey aboard the world's largest aircraft carrier, the ever so spacious USS Abe Lincoln. This second leg of the journey for those participating in Operation Fiery Vigil would take 33 hours. Our destination would be another former U.S. installation, Mactan Air Base Cebu, located in the central Visayas Islands. On board the USS Abe Lincoln, guests were provided absolute kindness by the crew, with many family members being allowed use of the crew's quarters. This was of particular importance for small children. The ship's general purpose deck served as a major processing as well as entertainment area. Although the 5,000 or so crew members had to double up in sleeping quarters to allow accommodations in remaining berths for guests, Spacious dining areas and plenty of good food was the prevailing rule throughout the voyage. While the USS Abe Lincoln provided the best facilities possible, we might add that other evacuees on other vessels were not so lucky. This was, of course, attributable to the limitations of space and other conditions.
The end of what was undoubtedly the first sea voyage for most of our group brought the giant vessel to within 15 miles offshore from Cebu. After meticulous safety briefings and the donning of required gear, each man, woman, and child were placed in a holding area to await an elevator lift to the flight deck. Transportation from the carrier point offshore to Mactan Air Base would require a continuous cycle of shuttling helicopters throughout the day until the movement was complete. This crucial intermediary phase of the Odyssey offered travelers of Operation Fiery Vigil a chance to reach firm ground, receive refreshments, baby supplies, attend to pets, and of course cover requirements necessary of immigration and naturalization. While these first groups process with relative ease, those in weeks to follow would experience considerable difficulties as well as extended delays. After this stop at Mactan Air Base, evacuees could now look to the next point of processing in their lengthy ordeal. Anderson Air Force Base, Guam. the crisis of movement and dealing with the demands of constant lines and waiting, youngsters had to suffer along with the adults. Here, two youth take time out to look back through a Clark Air Base school yearbook at faces from a school they will never see again. For many making this stop at Guam, night and day seem to blend together. While listening for pertinent departure information, evacuees were in constant view of arriving and departing flight.
The evening of June 21st meant the group's arrival at Hickam Air Force Base, Hawaii. This relatively short process point brought many travelers to their new assignment in another paradise, while others continued to look ahead to touching down on the U.S. mainland. Departing Travis Air Force Base for all points across America and around the world, evacuees can thank the hundreds of military and civilian men and women throughout the vast network of Operation Fiery Vigil. Those who initiated and maintained safe haven projects in the Philippines and elsewhere will be long remembered by the thousands they serve. In the next part of our presentation, we look back to see the mass destructive force of nature, a monumental military industrial complex that has been changed forever, and the suffering of fellow human beings faced with the task of rebuilding amid natural, economic, and political turmoil.